The start of hurricane season is just four days away, and if you don't already have flood insurance, you really should consider it. This season is expected to be very active, a very active hurricane season, and we all know too well uh, the devastation that flooding brings or can bring. Amy Davis is here to answer some questions about private flood insurance versus the national flood insurance program that we often hear about. Yeah, exactly. And which one is better for you really depends on where you live, your flood risk, how much coverage you want. We first started talking about private flood insurance in 2019. It was around before that, but hardly anybody knew about it. Um, we were telling you that some companies were offering it and why you should check it out. Well, in 2022, when I checked, there was only one private flood carrier for insurance for my home, and now there are several. I think the reason that we're seeing more options right now is because lenders have changed their roles as far as what's required for flood insurance for new purchases. So in the past, it was you have to go FEMA flood in order for that policy to qualify for you to close on the home. And now they're accepting private flood policy. So all the private flood carriers that were out there already are now writing more business because these new home purchase um, clients are going out and looking for uh, comparative prices between FEMA flood and private flood. All right, so that's Jessica Fuentes with Brazos Insurance Agency, and she says there are pros and cons of both private flood insurance and flood insurance from FEMA. So here are the biggest differences we want you to know. With FEMA, no matter how much your home is worth, you can never get coverage for more than $250,000 on your home and no more than $100,000 for contents that are destroyed when and if your home floods. And FEMA's coverage is always paying your actual cash value for those losses. What your property was worth at the time it was destroyed, not what you paid for it or what it will cost to replace it. With private policies, we're going to whip around here. If your home is worth three hundred or four hundred thousand dollars, you can pay for that much higher coverage at full replacement cost. FEMA policies actually take 30 days. We're over here. FEMA policies actually take 30 days to take effect, and most private plans are effective as soon as you pay your first premium. So if you're in an area at higher risk of flooding, just know that private flood insurance will likely be more expensive for you than an NFIP policy. But the biggest difference of these plans really is who's backing them. Private flood carriers are private insurance carriers, so, you know, they could always go out of business if they, you know, pay out too many claims in a certain area, whereas FEMA is backed by the government. So it's always going to be there, even though, you know, it may be not as comprehensive, um, but the basic coverage that they offer will always be there. Here's something else you need to know. FEMA reset its rates for flood policies in 21, so they already know how much you're going to pay for flood insurance every year. But if you have a policy now, as long as you renew it every year, your rates will just go up incrementally until you reach that set rate. Mm -hmm. If you cancel or you move to a private flood insurance policy, but then want to go back to the National Flood Insurance Program, your new rate is going to be at that top rate that FEMA set for your property back in 21. Now you can find out what that rate is for your home. Just call an insurance broker and ask them to give you a flood insurance quote as if you're a brand new customer, and that will be your max rate. So the idea maybe to look for some savings or maybe some exceptions to a policy specifically you're looking for, there's got to be some reason, right, to go switch or figure it out. Yeah, I mean, right. I mean, out. if you're, for example, I mean, like me, where you might be in an area where obviously flooding, flood insurance is not required, but you want to have it just as a, you know, good preventative, just in case sure. it might be less expensive for you. Okay. And, and so it's worth it to check it. In 2022, it was not. It was more. There was one carrier, and I checked the reviews for that carrier. And I was like, well, well, I hope I'd never have to use that company. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. But it's worth a check because yeah. she said there are a lot more companies writing those policies now. And really do that research too. Once you yeah. yeah, really important. That's a good one. Amy, thank you.